All right, I've already got the other side on. I haven't gotten it tightened down, but I've just got it on. Now when I put it back on this side, it's going to be uh, the washer, the spring, the washer, your first, your tension nut, and then your lock nut. It's all going to go on basically that direction from here is how it's going to go on to the all thread down there located in the center of the screen. I want to make sure whenever you put the other side, don't tighten the other side down yet. Make sure you get both springs and washers and nuts on both sides before you tighten it down. The washer, the spring, washer again, tension nut, save your lock nut till you get all your adjustments done. Now the book says I've got a caliper here. It's already set to one inch on this spot, right? One inch of space. Your one inch needs to be from, skip the step to show you. I want to make sure this teaches you right. When all said and done is put together, you want to have from outside of washer to outside of washer with compression one inch on your calipers. Alright, so I've already got it on the other side. It's fully installed. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. Grab my ratchet. Grab my ratcheting wrench. Outside, outside washer, outside washer is one inch. I'm going to go ahead and tighten the other side down. And pause it for a second and then I'll, we'll put those plates back on. Alright, so I got both sides tightened down to the one inch on the spring on the caliper from outside of washer to outside washer. I'm going to go ahead and start throwing my pin deflector boards back in. Brunswick, call, uh, I have a gauge block here that Brunswick sells. Uh, you've got your, your your 5, your 10, your 15, and your 20 millimeter height. And when you turn it upright, you it's easier this way. They've got it labeled right here in each it's a engraving. But uh, you've got 50 millimeters. You got a, a 35, a 25, and another 25. So whenever you add all these numbers together, it's 135 tall. So you can use this is actually set up and gauged so whenever you're doing your table height to make sure it's not too high or too low on the table for the setting height. That's what this gauge block works for. But uh, in this instance, I'm going to show you Brunswick uh, states in the book that they say use the 5 millimeter height. They want your pin deflector board to be 5 millimeters up off your transport band. Well, I don't like that. It's For us, it's a little too low in my opinion. Uh, I don't like my transport, or I don't like my pin deflector boards to be rubbing my transport band. And as soon as pins are knocked to the back of the pit, the weight of the pin pushes on the deflector board, which goes down into the transport band and rubs a little, starts curling your deflector board. So I go a little higher. I usually choose the height of, which appears to be about seven millimeters, the thickness of most wrenches. And uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but it is just a slight bit higher or thicker than the five millimeter. I got a 13 millimeter socket on my drill already. 
I'm just going to stick the head of this wrench underneath the pin deflector board and to space it off of the roller, because the roller is firm, the transport band sags down, so space it off of that roller, and then the rest of it should, as long as your uh, deflector boards are level in your bracket, it should, it should just uh, plane itself out. You have to hold it. I wouldn't recommend just expecting it resting on the wrench to do the right work for you. Other side. Same thing, got the wrench. And stick it underneath. Tighten up. I'm go ahead and take the wrench itself and double check how much tension my drill put on there. bring it down here to show you the gap. You can probably see it with the light. There you go. That's my space off the, I got my transport band and the rollers right here. Push down, but that's the, uh, that's the space you need to have between your pin deflector boards and your transport band. I'm going to go ahead and install the other side. I'm going to go ahead and pause you for a second. All right, so I've got the pin setter in diagnostic. I need to run it now and see that my transport band is staying centered, that it's not walking left or right. As I said, I've already got my tension springs here set up with an inch from outside of washer to outside of washer. So as I watch this start running back and forth, one thing I would not do is I will not tighten these more because they're at my standards by Brunswick. If anything, if I have to do any adjustments from this point, I will loosen a side. I'm going to go ahead and run it and see if it starts moving. All right, I don't want to keep you in the dark here. I'm uh, going to let you know that the second I started it up, I noticed my T-band was not moving, and that meant that my transport band drive belt was not installed. I just went to the, I paused it real quick, went to the other side, and slapped it on. Now let's try this again. We're going to see if that band starts walking. I'm looking at I'm looking at the reveal right here in the light on the metal roller. Okay, I see it's coming to the left already. So that tells me I don't know if you guys saw that. It came over about a quarter inch in about four rolls. So that tells me that my that this side here would need to be left alone. I'd want to loosen the opposite side on the other end to try and get my timing out. So I make sure that I don't tighten any more than the outside of the washer inch. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen that side just slowly and cautiously and keep watching it and see if it gets centered up properly. And uh, from that point, you guys should be able to take, it, take off from there. Good luck with all your repairs.